Amigathon is back! Join the Amigos on Saturday, July 7th as they play Amiga games for up to 24 hours to benefit the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. Go to Amigathon.com to donate and for more information. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to talk about Saber Team. Ooh. Aaron, what's your favorite combat sword? Combat sword wooden. Wooden, yeah, just straight up. Uh, well, because I'm school. not, I'm not like a swordsman like you, and that way I don't have to cut my own arm off or something. Yeah, yeah. Or combat sword. If really, if I was really in combat, a gun would be good. Uh, the combat sword. What about a shuriken? Can does that count? I was thinking you were going to say the the glaive. From, the glaive is it was like a crawl. big shuriken. Technically, the glaive is not something you use as a sword. You throw it. Oh, you can't. You've wield never it seen and... crawl, have you? It said it. Okay, you're going to think that I'm dumb. Correct. But I always thought that somehow it was either a prequel or a sequel or set in the same universe as Willow. No, it has zero to do with Willow. Are no, you sure? No, because no in my mind, that's the the connection is there. Your mind is cold and lonely. Mm. It doesn't understand. No, there's no connection. Crawl crushes Willow, by the way. Crushes. Is it a better film? Oh, are you kidding me? Crawl. It's got the freaking <laughs> glaive. That's true. Carters. Well, he doesn't have a special weapon. That does have Mad Mardigan, though. I do like him. Who's that? you never seen Willow either, have you? i see seen Willow. You don't know who Mad Mardigan is? He's the star of the movie. Is he the little guy? No. Move on. Okay. We got uh, feedback from last week. Aaron? We're going to get feedback for that. Um, we actually have some new iTunes reviews. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. on iTunes? We're on iTunes. I know. It's it's crazy. Didn't we do two spots where I kept forgetting we were on there and begging <laughs> for help? Please support us. So, Trum11 writes... Who? Trum11. Trum. Let's say Trauma. Oh, I Trauma11. I was like, that's a good name. It's also only one letter away from Trump. So, oh, maybe well, he listens. A nostalgic romp through my beloved childhood. Beige triangles, many hits and misses. <laughs> Presented by two misfits who give you an insight of what it was like to own the Commodore system stateside. Keep it up. Keep up the great work, guys. Misfits? Yeah. Hey. Oh, that's unbelievable. Just a couple of nitwits. Did you say beige triangle? Beige triangle. Isn't it a rectangle? I don't even know what he's referring to. <laughs> so, <laughs> we've got um, I am Paul H. from Norway, who I think is also with us in the chat right now. Paul H. Uh, he says, uh, even Amiga Power would give them over 90%. Bam! Yeah. If you're looking for banter and Amiga gaming news reviews, look no further. Boat and Aaron nail it every week with their fun and lively discussions of classic and not-so-classic Amiga games. Throw them a couple bucks on Patreon and you'll even have your name sung by Boat's dulcet tones. Oh, gosh. These guys are the real deal. A credit to the Amiga and retro community. Wow. <laughs> How much do we pay Paul H? Uh, not enough. I mean, Holy thank you, smokes. Paul. What, and, a, what a review. And finally, we have a review from Joe the Zombie from the USA. <laughs> we, he Joe said, the Zombie. He says, I just found this Amiga podcast and it's nothing short of exceptional. News, interviews, hardware labs, and best of all, the games. What a fun show to listen to while in the car. These guys have great personalities and their playful banter is highly addicting. I always look forward to the next episode. Highly recommended. Our banter. So thank you. All of you guys, Trum11, I am Paul H. and Zoe the Zombie for your iTunes reviews. Uh, and if you haven't written us a review on iTunes and you like the show, uh, please do because that is still the number one way that people discover us, even for Apple haters like it's Aaron. It's appalling to me that we um, have to even go down that road. You know, that's, this, this, is how, this is how people find us. Now, wait a minute. Just this very week, we have established ourselves. On the Google Music servers, whatever the heck that is. The Google Music I got podcast. E app. I got emailed today, just this very day, that Ooh. said we had been accepted. This and ARG are now part of the Google family. Well, that's fantastic. That's if, right. If you listen to I us, no idea how to access to it. <laughs> if you listen to us on the Google Podcasts app, and there's a review mechanism on there, hey, this is the time to leave because it's a brand new platform. Everybody start from ground zero. Um, and uh, we want to let people know that there is a weekly Amiga-focused podcast out there coming from the U.S. What's that service called over there? The Google one that I signed oh, up I have for? Oh, I have Google Podcast. Is that what it is? I, I have no know. idea. I don't either. I've never used it, but I mean, I hear it's great. Yeah. So if it's as good as Google Plus, I'm in. <laughs> All right. Um, we got some feedback last week. Uh, very, very angry feedback. Oh um, man. That you forgot to mention eBay pricing on Darkseed. I know. I did do that. Uh, so I took the liberty of looking it up. Someone was angry. I can't believe anyone gave a crap about that. I'm stunned. It, I even had it in my notes. It was Chad. Chad who? Oh, young Chad. Hat Chad. Hat Chad? 
<laughs> that pie toting scumbag. So I found this. This is the only time I've ever seen this on eBay. All right. The listing says <laughs> cheapest on eBay <laughs> rare dark seed game Commodore Amiga, pre-owned. Wow. The price. Thirty-nine seventy-seven. Well, that's cheap. The cheapest. <laughs> that's the cheap. Well, according to this auction, I'll have to say I looked that up, and mm -hmm. it was pricey. Yeah, it was extremely pricey because they are. A lot of the the game was actually called Adventure. It was listed as Adventure Dark Seed. Did you go over that in the show mm -hmm. at all? That was a weird subtitle. I don't know why it was listed like that on eBay, but anyway, there is your eBay pricing for you know, Dark you, Seed. Did you get that? You didn't since you weren't involved. In it. Did you ever get to play that game at all? I did not play it. You know, was, we've we've done several adventure games now, mm -hmm. uh, which who to thunk it? And I'm gonna tell you, uh, I did not hate that, and I was sure I was gonna hate it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually pretty sort of interesting. It was it was simple, you know, but it was it was, for me it was a good you know it was a good thing to play, and it was easy to get around and stuff. I kind of dug it. Cool, know? great. And Brent really liked it. He thought it was awesome. So there you go. He yeah. At least he liked the game he was sitting in on. Yeah, I I, um, I look forward to listening to that and catching up on ARG. You guys just did uh, Neo Geo. We did Neo Geo uh, this past week, and it was uh, super fun. We we uh, you know it's Brent, so you know what's coming. But it, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, Aaron, it is mail time. Oh boy! All so right. uh, our first package is not this package that sits before you. Oh, wow. uh, our it's first package me. comes to us all the way from beautiful Hawaii. Oh, okay. Hopefully not lava covered Hawaii. Oh man, they're they're, they're getting a kind of a weird deal. They're in they're in yeah. a bad way over yeah. there. Um, so this comes from our favorite magnet producer <laughs> of them all, Jonas Rula. Jonas has produced uh, this year's. Amigathon magnets. Oh man, uh, these are these are super super cool. Uh, oh yeah, that's Jonas yeah. always does great work. This looks so good. Yeah, he's a pro. Yeah, and so if you uh, if you make a thirty dollar or more donation to Amigathon this year and you forward your uh, address or your email your confirmation email to me at john at amigospodcast dot com, I will wing one of these to you uh, after Amigathon is over. So uh, those are great, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Gosh, very he does good. the best. He does the best stuff with magnets. I love it. Yeah. Thank you very much. But man. that's not all. Jonas has also printed out a few extra pieces. Oh yeah. Here is one of the first ones. Oh man. Matching Look at that. matching boing balls for each of us. Isn't that nice? That's gonna go right in the center of the fridge. Eep will love it. That is cool. Complete yeah. with like. Low res. That's right. Low res textures, <laughs> and it's like in the middle of the bounce because it's slightly compressed. I love it. Look at yeah. that. So that's going to go right on the side of the arcade, yes, thank right? Thank you very much. You know, he he made these because he recalled us talking about how the sides of Amigo Studios East are magnetic. Yeah, yeah. This will go. That's exactly where I'm going to put it. Yeah, I'll yeah. get one. I'll get both these magnets to get. I've got all his magnets up, stuck up on the walls. And this is another one just for I love you. It. Oh man! Yeah, the uh, Amigos oh, logo. I also appreciate it. the fact that our feet are peeking out from under the desk. <laughs> it's like the Flintstones car. Yeah, we um, just pick up this whole thing and walk off. Yeah. Look at that, guys! Man, it's, thank you, Jess. That's in that nice. It's, it's so cool. That so will cool. stick very nicely on the wall. Yeah, I need to. I'll have to put all this stuff up and then take a video over there. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you thank so you much, very Jonas. Much. That's awesome. God, that's crazy cool. I love it. I love it. All right, Aaron. It's time to open the second package, which right. I'll let you do the honors. This is from Tapes from the Crib. Oh, man. A.K.A. Mark McDonald. So, uh, I have not looked inside this. I do not know what's in it. It's my, my video buddy. Oh, look at this. You got a boat? Why don't you see what that is? Okay. Oh, man. Look at that. So this, I believe, is for you. Look at that. And that, I believe, is for me. Atari. Yeah. So he saw you wearing a, uh, it was some sort of a Dallas shirt. Uh, I don't know if it was a... San Antonio Spurs. Uh, and so he, he bought you that. Thank as a, you. As a, as a complimentary Isn't that nice? wardrobe piece. I like it. And uh, he has chosen a vintage Atari shirt. That has Japanese letters on oh, it. I didn't see that. Yeah, awesome. which makes everything cool in cyberpunk. Oh man! So thank wow, you so nice. much, Tapes. Tapes is he? What a guy. We appreciate that, Tapes. 
I always need more shirts, Boat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, whoops, I just took my microphone off. <laughs> That's the power there's, of it. There's actually some more stuff in here. Let me uh, re-mic it up. Should I tap this a few times to go hello testing? You should. You should speak directly oh, into it. Now, here's what I always like to get. Look at that. Oh, wow. A big pile of Amiga magazines. Now, you know. What do you got there? Lots of Amiga futures. Now, look at these. Boy, that's, you know, it's amazing to me that in this day and age, because <laughs> this is. <laughs> now, this takes me back. This is an old Amiga World magazine, which this is the magazine we actually got in the States. Really? Yeah, this is a United States magazine right here. The CDTV, yeah. Einstein Move Over. You know, the funny thing is, I'll tell you a story about these. I used to have a subscription to this. This is sort of a sad story and sort of a funny story. Uh, I had a ton of Amiga magazines. Now, I will admit, as excited I was to get that because I haven't seen one forever, when you compare that to this, one of these big the British ones, the British ones beat the snot out of the <laughs> ones that we got in the States. I mean, look at the size of this thing. Look yeah. at the thickness of that. Yeah. Kind of, it's, it's probably 75% ads. Yeah. That's a moose. So I had a big collection of these, too. Because you could get them at, the, at certain news stands mm -hmm. if you, and with the discs and everything. Sure. And I had them. At my, I had them. I, t I towed these things everywhere I went. I had them for years. And they were in an old hamper. All right. And it was just stacked full of bad wrestling magazines. And when I lived in um, Lexington, when I lived in Lexington, my second house, uh, I lost my job, and I had to get, I had to sell the house, and I was literally right up against the wire getting out of there. And I moved out. I had moved to, uh, back to West Virginia, and I was here for a couple weeks when it occurred to me that I had left. Actually, it was a couple months. I had left that hamper in the attic, mm. and I never saw any of that stuff again. All those sweet magazines. Yeah. Look at that. These are great. Thank you very much, Tapes. Yeah, Man, these are we really appreciate it. And trust me, when everyone that sent us magazines, because we've got, you know, Robbie sent us, but we've got a ton of magazines. I always read these mm -hmm. <laughs> cover to cover because, mm -hmm. I mean, again, for us, this stuff is like gold. We didn't get, we didn't get all, all the Mega Futures. Of course, all, there's, these are still cooking. These are all current, too, yeah. so we could really yeah. have a good time with those. Uh, but these older ones, like you can't just hop out and get these at like a boot sale or something. You know, it's not going to happen. No. Look at that, by the way. There you there go. There it is. International Open Golf. So this will be fun. But yeah, thanks, Tape. Thanks for everything. That was very nice of you guys. Yeah. Super cool. Love it. All right, Aaron. This concludes the uh, mailbag segment. You want to jump into this week's Amiga News? I do. Let me uh, grab the Gambletron. Amiga News. Get the robot ready. <laughs> so <laughs> um, let's go over what we've missed during the week. Now, actually, this is a pretty good week. Uh, of, of news. I mean, there was some pretty good stuff that happened. I don't normally cover straight up utilities, yo, mm -hmm. but uh, let's talk about WinUAE. They dropped to four. Dot oh. O, dot o. That's got to be a big release. Yeah, they, uh, it's uh, supposedly, I have, without looking through it too fully into it, I haven't updated to it. It's, uh, uh, it's got uh, bug fixes, new features. It's the usual quality work from the team over there. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've, uh, they've done a lot of good stuff. Uh, they always do, you know. It's always a solid, uh, a solid uh, uh, piece of software. So, and I'm sure when they go up to four, I'm sure they've done they've done some nice stuff. So, of course, you can go download that it's up to anywhere you want. It's yeah. everywhere. It's linked up. All this stuff's linked up on the Google Plus. So, along the same lines, another heavy hitter dropped a, uh, something. This has actually happened a little over a week ago, but I just found out about it. Uh, our buddies over at Cloanto, uh, the Amiga Forever people, just released. Uh, about a week and a half ago, released uh, Amiga Explorer 7, mm. which lets you basically access your Amiga via your PC. Uh, I've actually, I used this a long time ago. One thing, when you when I updated to the uh, to the uh, card, it, Compact Flash, mm -hmm. it, it made it less uh, tedious to act to transfer stuff back and forth. But this was something like what I used before I got a Compact Flash. It, 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 it does a good job. So, and it's free. Uh, it's it's you can't uh, be free. Yeah. It's, so it's and if you're uh, if you're an Amiga Forever subscriber, I think it'll automatically update. Uh, I haven't I haven't checked mine yet, but it probably you may have done it a couple weeks ago. I didn't even notice it. Um, so, <laughs> I love this. You know our our, our buddy Dreamcatcher, the Dreamcatcher, the Dreamcatcher. That's his when they when they relaunch the series, they call it the yeah. Dreamcatcher. I like how he occasionally, and whether he does it on purpose or accidentally, he has these themes. And this week's themes furry little critters. Mm -hmm. So the first game he looks at is uh, called uh, Beaver. It's called uh, Beaver. I like that's just what it's called. Yeah. Let's see what's got the beavers. Name. Now. 
I had never played this, so when I read this article, I was like, well, I'm playing this. So mm -hmm. I loaded it up and actually tried it out. Um, you talk about a game that does not let you mess around. Now, again, this could be an NTSC thing. I don't know what it is, but, you know, you know, in a lot of games that are scrollers, the screen sort of is ushering you for it. Mm -hmm. This one, the screen is sticking its boot out and just beating you in the back. <laughs> go, go, go. It's a hard roll. Wow. And the characters and stuff, it's a cute little game. It's mm -hmm. real, it, all the graphics are big and cartoony, but man, it is tough. It's a tough game, and it's, uh, it's one of your classic Amiga platformers that is... <sighs> It's not the best. I just put it that way. It's it's um, it just doesn't feel like it was fully fleshed out to me. But I mean, it looks awesome. I have to say, I was impressed with the way it looked. It sounds pretty good too. So anyway, uh, it's a great article from the, from the man. And then we'll go ahead and snap to his other one. Uh, he's also stuck up a video. This now, this is a game I'd heard of, but I didn't know there was an Amiga version of it called Mister Nuts. Yeah, I now, remember this. Was a this. Super Nintendo game, wasn't right. it? Right. Right. Did you did you know this was on the on the Amiga? I had no idea that this was on the Amiga, so, so I was really surprised. And so Dreamcatcher has done a video with this one, and, and uh, man, it's really good. I wish I, I need to learn some of his tricks because this video production makes me look like garbage. Yeah, yeah. Well, which most do, most do, frankly. <laughs> but I mean, his is great. So if if you if you want to learn about Mister Nuts, this is on my list. I, I, I want to try this one too. I but I I did play a lot of the Beavers. And uh, got got through the first couple levels, uh, and uh, I wanted to like that one. I really did, but it's just it's a little goofy. This one looks just from looking at it, it looks a little more structured than yeah. Beavers. This looks a lot like a you know your 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 platform. It looks like a quality platformer too. I yeah, mean, yeah. This looks okay. Yeah. Uh, did you play this on the other platforms? No, I always remembered hearing about it, but I never played yeah. it. The the the, the uh, concept of it, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe that uh, 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 watching his video, he said that the, the, the hidden, they weren't sure what kind of animal they were going to make this to be, and they finally the, 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 they decided not to go with a um, with, with a caveman teenager, yeah, you or, know, or an, <laughs> an alien that's not an ant, <laughs> but it represents the ant, <laughs> it represents yeah. ants everywhere. Man, the Amiga platforms and what there's been a lot of there's been a lot of stuff smoked yeah. on the way to those things. Now this is something that I I, I find interesting here. Um, a couple weeks ago, it's been about a couple months maybe, I, I mentioned that our buddy over at Amiga Love mm -hmm. has, was looking to find a fellow up in uh, uh, southern Ohio slash northern Kentucky to get the scoop on something for the, uh, a piece of hardware called the Rejuvenator. Mm -hmm. All right. So this popped up on my feed because I, I follow Amiga Love on, on uh, YouTube. And the fellow's name there, Eric Hill. Um, gave this speech just a couple days ago. This has been taped pretty recently. But anyway, he one of the things he mentions is that not only have they 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 contact this guy, the guy had a blank, unpopulated rejuvenator board. And well, so let's back up. Tell okay. me what the rejuvenator is. Rejuvenator effectively makes your Amiga one thousand a five hundred with extra stuff. It's a real nice uh, uh, accelerated expansion board. Oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> and uh, um, and it fits within the original 1000 case right, and everything. That's right. That's right. And so um, he his what he wanted to do was try to produce these cuz they're real good but they were very lightly produced. Mm -hmm. And they were made by an outfit that was in um, in south, south, southern Ohio and the, the outfit that made them. And so Southern so Ohio, not too far from us. No, it's literally it's right up. It's it's the Is very. Is it in Proctorville? It's right at the tip of uh, no. It's uh, it's right at the tip of uh, where Ohio and Kentucky meet. Oh, there, okay, Cincinnati, that area. Yeah. All right. So anyway, he found the guy, and so well, he basically on this video he announces that they're going to do like a uh, a GoFundMe to actually produce these boards. Now uh, he says they're not cheap because what they they said most of the parts on them. They can get, but there's some parts that are going to be tougher to find. He said, I think he said they were going to be somewhere just south of, say, 500 bucks uh, for them. But they, I mean, they are a quality expansion, and they're super duper. You talk about the uh, designer, uh, super niche stuff. This yeah. is this is the embodiment. And of that. to me, this is a lot like the incognito board for the Atari 800. I don't know if you're aware of that, but mm -hmm. that basically turns an Atari, yeah. a stock Atari 800 into an XL slash XE machine, but mm -hmm. it fits inside the case. So you've got the aesthetic of the classic machine, but you've got all the power of a more modern machine in the same the, line. 
you know, this is all the time, but what, what are the advantages of the XL over the 800? I mean, I guess what I'm saying is because I've played a lot of the games on, on the 800 and the 800 XL, and it, are they, are there, is there, were there a lot of stuff made that won't run on the 8? Yes. Uh, most of the, the gray cartridge games that were produced for the XL and yeah. the XE won't run on the 800 because it doesn't have, it doesn't have, the processor isn't, isn't fast enough. Hmm. And um, I did not know that. Yeah, and so the um, so it's a uh, it's basically it gives your 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 800 all the compatibility it needs um, because you know the XL machine and the XE machines they were kind of like the AGA of the Atari 800. I see. Yeah. I see. Well, this yeah. anyway, more power to this guy. And I, I, I sent him a little message under the thing. I, I was impressed. And you can see right there he talks about some of this stuff. It lets you use the uh, the bigger Ag Ag Agnes chip and some other stuff. So. Awesome! I'm glad he found it. I hope they uh, get funded. If I had a 1,000, I'd be all over it. I I often lament that I wish I'd kept my 1,000. Yeah, I like it's it still so my much. favorite Amiga. You know, this isn't news, but I'm gonna. T I, you know, I've got the. Uh, I've I lost you know my pal 600 that I got sent uh, from down under. You know, uh, went like I said, it went south on me a little bit. The joystick was so, so I thought I thought to myself, you know, what I'm gonna do is. I'm going to, because I was looking for a new 600, I was like, eh, you know, so I thought, well, I'll get a new 600 motherboard. And I thought, well, heck, if I'm going to do that, why don't I just get a PAL motherboard for my 1200? Oh, right? not what a bad a, idea. That's a brilliant plan, right? Yeah. Well, there are none. Oh. <laughs> and so I thought, well, okay, I'll see if I can get a PAL, another PAL motherboard for the 600. And I've looked, and I found one that was like going for 70 bucks. Like, okay, here we go. I watched the auction, watched the auction. Just a 600 motherboard, PAL motherboard, this thing went for almost 180 bucks. Oh my gosh. $180. And I thought to myself, and I talked to, uh, gosh, who did I talk to online the other day about this? But uh, somebody in Discord, but I mean, there, there's, a, there's there, the day is coming where we're, these things are going to be, it's a lot like pinball is. Mm -hmm. I mean, the day is coming where this is going to be the wealthiest of wealthy man's game. Right. And the rest of us are going to be, I mean, if you've got one, great. And if you don't, you're boned. Yeah. Yeah, you know, fire up Amiga forever. That's the only way you're going to be able to and, play. And so, stuff. it's kind of sad because arcade games went down that route, mm -hmm. you know. And now, and pinball, of course, was down there early. Yeah. And now the class, and even the old PCs, which you know, there's sort of that craze that's come back to let's get an old gaming PC, mm -hmm. which I find slightly baffling, considering that the old PCs were garbage. <laughs> that's well, why we got an Amiga, dude. You know. Uh, but I mean, I'll, there are some old PC games I like. Yeah, and I mean, if you're talking about 486 gaming, I mean, that's I'm still... I'm talking that's pre still, that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what these guys... That, that's become a big thing. Mm -hmm. LGR, I'm sure, is behind a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Anyways, um, whatever. I guess you can't, you know, you can't make fun of people for doing that thing. But I, I had a PC back in those days, and I don't want to go back and revisit the gaming on it, I'll be honest with you. I think... Oh, I guess I should mention we, uh, we had a couple... Uh, uh, releases on the site, uh, aside from Dreamcatcher's fine stuff, uh, as as the boat mentioned, me and me and Brent uh, released a uh, an ADRG this week. It was uh, Neo Geo was on the wheel, and we dropped um, League Bowling and Viewpoint. Uh, I don't know if you've ever played either one of those. No, so uh, I'm really looking forward to watching this because I know nothing about either of these games. Yeah. Uh, Brent has a, as I mentioned this before, he's a new gimmick where he just picks garbage. He, yeah. I don't, he doesn't mean to, but he does. And, and bowling actually wasn't that bad, but he hey, he didn't like it that much. Uh, and Viewpoint was a game I'd seen, but I never actually really sat down and played. And it's, it's a pretty interesting game. So we had a lot of fun making that uh, in the old arcade, Amigo Studios East. Mm -hmm. Something else that just literally just dropped today, today, is the uh, Insert Disc 2. More BBS memories with the old guy patrol. <laughs> me, me, old Chad, Brent, and Boat sat around talking about BBS stuff, and this time it was, uh, it ranged from wacky characters from the BBSs to MUDs uh, to uh, uh, just uh, what it was like to play games, plus including the highly... Uh, the highly controversial segment where Brent talks about the weird uh, sex game that he played on the <laughs> drug wars. It's funny because I watched a video a couple since that was filmed of a guy talking about drug wars. Mm. I think it, actually I think it was a, it was an audio show. I think it was Shane's show, uh, Passenger Seat Radio. And he was talking about drug wars and once and 
I was like, yep, that was it. When I heard him say that, and then I watched this, I'm like, yeah, that's what it was. So if you want to hear Brent talk about drug wars and chlamydia. <laughs> this is a show for you. That's, <laughs> wow, what a way to push your show. Chlamydia. <laughs> that's all I got, Bo. All that's, right. That's all I got. Well, let's move from the world of Amiga News to this week's game. This week's game was uh, sponsored by Amigos Game Selection Committee member Brutal Barracuda, who is with us in the chat right the double now. Double B. Um, and this week's game is Saber Team. Not Saber Tooth. Not Saber Tooth. I'll tell you, full disclosure, when I saw this game come up, and uh, I, I, I remembered a game on the uh, Spectrum that had Saber. Saber and, Wolf. Yeah. And so I was, of course, I just thought it was that. It's not. It is not that. It is not that. <laughs> so thank God. Luckily, I played it. That was, wow, you can imagine my surprise. So. Let's talk about Saber Team. Let's do it. All right. Um, this was released in '92. Now this came out. Now this, I, it was funny. I didn't see this until I got on eBay to look the pricing up on it. So uh, you've got you've got a two disc version that was for the old ECS, mm -hmm. old school. You know? Right. Then you had a, an AGA version that was five discs. Wow. Weird. Because I played both. <laughs> no, exactly. It looked exactly the same. I think a lot of it's audio. And then you also had a CD32 version that just used the, the CD32 stick. Mm-hmm. Mm. That, that, yeah. Mm. Fire, bad. <laughs> um, this was... Uh, Can you imagine playing this game with a stick? I, I tried it. Oh, my gosh. I'll get to that in a minute. So, this was... Now, this was published by an outfit called Chrysalis, which we talked about before, but I think... And I couldn't find, I, some people said, yeah, some people didn't know, but I think they also developed it in-house. Mm. In-house. And now we talked about Chrysalis uh, back, do you remember what game it was? It was pretty recently. Here we go, yeah. Bugs Brain. I definitely remember talking come about on, it, but I can't, on, I, come I, on. I can't recall. Soccer Kid. Soccer, Soccer Kid, Kid. Okay. Uh, If you're, just a, as a quick throwback to that, they, they were, uh, they also published, they, the guys that founded it also published stuff under the Teak software. Uh, label, uh, but uh, uh, they were uh, located in uh, Rother, Rotherham. Probably Rotherham. Rotherham. There's no, you don't make the TH. Oh, I do. Well, you can if you like. <laughs> you just pronounce it the proper way. I'll pronounce it the dumb guy way. <laughs> anyway, that's where they were at back in the day. So uh, they were responsible for uh, Arabian, Arabian Nights. Remember that? They wrote uh, that song. It did. <laughs> you think they get more credit? Hill Street Blues. You remember the scene for that one? That was, um, yeah. No. What? That's that's Taxi, you idiot. Oh. <laughs> Did you know that? Or you... That's Hill Street Blues. No, it's not. Hill Street Blues is the taxi. How's it go? I don't know, but that's the taxi theme. Moving on. They also did a game called Prison. That sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of Manchester United games, which those probably sound big sellers, dandy to me. Um, it's a one-player bit here, uh, and one thing you notice right away is this is multi-language. All right, they ask you mm -hmm. what language or out of the game, and you can tell the way it's put together. Um, so before we really get too far into it, let's let's talk about. What in God's name is a saber team? Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Did you know what that was? I knew just from doing research, but you, why don't you explain? So, well, this is what I found. Okay, it's a form. It's one of the formations used by the SAS mm -hmm. to do, and they and they use these formations to diffuse, like. Now, what is problems. the SAS? It's a. I don't know what it stands for. It's like the British Secret yeah, Service. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, I don't. I know that, yeah. but I don't know what. What's the MI six? Same, it's that the same thing? It's like the FBI and the CIA. Okay. It's, it's all the same. So anyway, why does James Bond work for MI6? You don't know, do you? I don't know. I don't know what I... This SAS may not be the British Secret Service. Boat. I was expecting you to correct me. Good Lord. <laughs> your, your bitch are killing me here. <laughs> so anyway, someone in chat, do, do us a solid and tell us what SAS stands for. So anyway, you've basically it's a group of commandos that go in and take care of business. And so in this game... Do you control this team of highly trained commandos? Yeah, I think the SAS is like the Army Ranger, the Special Forces. That's, that's the word that's I was what trying I to thought, think yeah. of. MI six is the and internal. They, they kicked in Special Air Service. Oh, thank you, pigs. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. So that's that's the gimmick. Now, 
this game instantly reminded me of that game Hostage we played. Remember that? Or what was it called? That No, the other no. Game, the Hostages game in terms of the plot. Oh, okay. In terms of, well, because the there's died. a bunch of hostages. No, the I gameplay mean, died. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it also has sort of the same feel to it in a, in a weird way. Mm, uh, I disagree. Hold on. Let me, okay. let me. You know the opening where it tells you what's going on? It's like, we got problems. And this announcer says, like, these. in the very first mission comes up, it says, like, uh, uh, these guys have captured hostages, and they've already killed a hostage. So, mm-hmm. you get, well, you know, you're serious. Right. You need to go in there and get them. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought, oh, man, here we go. Right. So, that's the setup for the first mission. It just goes right into it. It's a, and I tried three different versions. They all did the same thing. So, there you go. I guess it just goes right, you know. And I will say the opening music, it's just pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and uh, the and the graphics that come up, there's kind of a, like a, the picture that comes up of the, that gets you started looks pretty good. And there's pictures scattered through this that look really good, especially on the newer versions. They look, they, they're fancy, mm-hmm. you know, they're fancier pictures. So you play this game and the game is, you're, is you control this unit of four guys. And it's, a, it's an isometric 45 degree angle. With a kind of a high perspective on it, all right? So you're looking. It's the same viewpoint that you get in a game like Syndicate. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Except, well, I'll get into that. Yeah. So, um, so the first thing you got to do is you've got to go and choose your four guys. That's right. All right. You get eight guys total. Actually, right, so the first thing that comes up is this menu, <laughs> and this the menu gets you settled for what's going to be right, happening. Right. <laughs> this game uses. No written words. It's Nine. all symbols and stuff. Mm-hmm. Sort of like, uh, sort of like North and South was or like that settlers. Too. Yeah, and so you've got a, a a disc with an arrow. Then you've got a group of dudes. <laughs> so the first thing that I did was clicked on the disc with the arrow. The game immediately crashed. Yeah. <laughs> wrong so wrong yeah. answer, boat. And then you've got a group of guys. And you've got like I think there's like a um, uh, the thing that starts the game was it a helicopter? I can't remember yeah. what it was. It was well, something. no, it's like the guy going like this. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. So anyway, they, amazingly, these pictures are pretty. They work pretty well. And so you, the first thing you do, you, you go and you and you pick the guys. Mm-hmm. And so you get a, you get about eight guys that you could pick from. And when you pick on the guys, it's got like a little, it's got a little bio, and it's got it's like what their special is. This is the part that is in English. It's mm-hmm. written. Thank God, because they could. It take a, a it take the world's best <laughs> mime to do. You know, sharp shooter, close quarters. <laughs> you know, medic. You know. Uh, but uh, uh, so you go through your commanders, and, so, and these guys have different specialities. They got a backstory. It tells you where they've been. You know, this guy worked. He was in Grenada or right. whatever. And he was. It's like, man, this is pretty in depth, mm-hmm. you know. And of course, if you're like me, I don't know jack squat about the military. So, in fact, I asked my buddy at work. I'm like, what is this gun? What the hell am I doing here? He helped me figure out which. What, I mean, it tells you after I after I look, but I'll get to that. So. You pick your four guys. Now, I usually pick a medic, uh, the long-distance guy, just a couple generic guys. Sometimes I would take a, two guys that do medical stuff. So then you've, you've picked your guys, okay? And it, and it shows their stats. These guys have different stats. They've got different, their the ages are different. They've got different amounts of endurance and mm-hmm. whatnot and different amount of like, hit points. So once you pick your four guys, then you're ready to go pick your weapons, all right? So... Uh, it's got a ton of uh, it's got a ton of different weapons in it that are like uh, like armaments like and they're you know I don't know Jack Squad about guns but it's got a bunch of different guns. It's I think a, one of the draws of this game was that it everything seemed ultra realistic like all of those those numbers and letters I'm sure were matched up to the picture of the gun on there. Right, right, there. right. And so, uh, luckily, it's got 12 different offensive weapons to choose from, all right? And they're automatic and semi-automatic rifle. There's two different types of, like, like basically, like, gas things. Mm-hmm. I guess a grenade. There's a stun grenade. And then there's and there's a flash grenade. Right. So there's two different grenades. And then they've got, uh, you could also pick up, like, uh, first aid packs, bulletproof vests, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, one thing I learned in my very first mission, all right, is that you don't want to pick the wrong ammunition for your gun. <laughs> now, uh, now I, I was just like, I didn't care. I was like, oh, I'll just take that net screw. I'm gone. I want to see what this game looks like. And so when I went into combat, I'm like, all right, let's load this gun. And it goes, you're out of ammo. You're aiming. I was like, oh, son of a gun. And at that point, you're screwed. Yeah, now... It, truth be told, it does show you when you pick the it ammunition, does. it shows up under the gun if it's the right ammunition. Well, I didn't so, know that the yeah. first time I played it. And it even tells you, if you click on the ammunition, by the way, just 
figure out how to get the stuff on the right side of the screen. It's no, not easy. It There's to, no. What you have to do is you have to pick the thing, mm -hmm. and you have to pick it again right. down at the bottom. Right. It's not intuitive. Which and is the, the, sort of the pre. Yeah. That's a preface to a game that is that's its theme. And the manual does not help you in that regard. It doesn't say. I didn't look at the manual. Oh, I, I looked at the manual constantly. The manual right. is of little to no use. So. You pick all your stuff, and then presumably you pick the proper weapon, mm -hmm. and you pick the bullets to go with it. Like, you can't use the chain gun bullets with the first gun. <laughs> all right, all right. So then, now you're now you're ready. You're ready. Now you it's, time, it's go time. <laughs> you hit the button, and your guys, it shows a picture of your guys, and it shows, it's like, okay. So you, it starts you, the first mission, it starts you out in this uh, isometric view of the front of a building. And you can put your guys down anywhere you want in front of the building. You put them down. Four guys. So... Then the fun really begins because oh, yeah. it's time to figure out what the hell you do to control this game. So you, we just have to get into how how it controls. There's no easy way to describe it. At the bottom, of the, the screen is split basically into like a third versus two thirds. The top two thirds of the screen are the are the environment. Mm -hmm. It's your guy. It shows your guys on the screen. The bottom third is a row of boxes. I think there's like a, was it. A, there's, there's seven boxes, seven, yeah, 14 and, then, boxes. And, then, and then a compass right. and the compass has little arrows around mm -hmm. it so I didn't learn this until about the third time I played it so you and each of the boxes at the bottom of the screen has a little picture in it and when you go over it it animates and mm -hmm. shows you what so it doesn't now clear from your mind any any thought that there might be hover over text or anything like that like you'd find in a modern game there's none of that there's you no get text. no help yeah. so you have to sort of figure out what those things did mm -hmm. a couple of them really threw me the one that I mean most of them are pretty they give you a pretty good idea the one that really threw me was the how to end your turn one because it's got a though, and it, it turns out it's a thing. It's a wheel that spins mm -hmm. around like you'd see, like a submarine right. where you close the door, mm -hmm. and then an X, right? And, a, and it in turn because it's a turning. Oh, thing. I never, I means. never put that together. So how did you end your turn? You just got, you just love, you didn't I pay just, attention I, to what it was. No, I was just like, this is it's the big red X. Yeah, yeah. well, I didn't know. Uh, you're a smart guy. And one of them is is, uh, is to shoot somebody, and mm -hmm. there's one to throw grenades, and there's one to uh, to dance with somebody. Yeah, yeah, you know, who do it? And then mm -hmm. there's a thing that like your status. Uh, and there's, uh, there's a, a yeah. switch guy. You switch to the next switch man guy, in your party. Yeah. yeah. So to move your guy, you have two choices. Okay. None of the choices are good. Like normally, what I would like to do is just take the guy, just click on him, and just move it. But that's out. No. What you can do is two things. Number one, there's a box at the bottom that's a move your guy box. You click on that box. When, and whatever guy you've got highlighted, you click where you want him to go, and he'll take off. Okay. Now, I'm going to stop you right there. All right. Because it's my turn to say that I did not know that was possible. Okay. I use the compass arrows exclusively to move so my guy. So you didn't know about the move guy, and, Bob? Yeah. And I thought, why don't they just have a thing where I can click on the screen and move him? And so, well, I'll tell you, I was the exact opposite. I didn't realize you could use the compass oh. arrows. Oh. But I'll tell you what it's I thought. It's just like an O. Henry story. Uh, here's what I thought they would. I thought the compass arrows were strictly to pivot your guy mm -hmm. in place, which they do. Which they do. I didn't realize you could just hold them down and move him. Mm -hmm. You know, which so, is how I move. There you yeah. go. So anyway, you move your guys one at a time, and each guy has so many action points. Right. Okay. This is the heart of the game. The action. So points. the action points are. Uh, uh, you get the action points from the following. How your 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 guy's speed, mm -hmm. right? Is your guy hurt? If mm -hmm. he is, that takes action points. Right. How much junk is he carrying? Yep. If he's got a if he's got a bulletproof vest, if he's got on uh, uh, got a, a five weapons, he's gonna have less action points. Uh, and then uh, also how strong he is. I think that that counts towards your income. So mm -hmm. it all it calculates. It's not simple. I mean, it, I mean, I don't know how the math is done, but that's what they do. And so you might have thirty two movement points, and so you can. Moving forward, that's a point. Moving five spaces forward is five points. Moving five spaces and turning a couple of times, the turns count as mm -hmm. points. So you do you, you rinse and repeat moving with each of the guys. Like I said, I used I used the little move guy button. Boat used the compass, but I mean you can now use does it one. tell you when you before you move if you use the move guy button and then point? See, he's doing the same thing I am. You know, he's that's using, the smart way to do it. Is it okay? Now, and like, but I mean, here's the thing with the move guy button. You don't know, like, if I say I want to, I'm just if I click here, go there. It doesn't just go there until he runs out. Of okay, action. it doesn't. It doesn't pop up anything that says this is going to cost you this many no. points. Okay, <laughs> are you kidding me? Hey, heck, no. I had to ask. So once you move all your guys into position, you hit your in turn button, right? And then. The real fun begins. Now, did you play which versions did you play? Do you remember? Did you play the? I'm pretty ATA sure I played. Version? I 
I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell Let you. Let me ask you, how long did it take It in took for turns? freaking ever. Oh, so you played the OCSECS okay. version. That's why I didn't <laughs> play that, because I read up on this. So once you make your moves, you hit your end turn button, and then the computer will make its moves for the hostages and for the bad guys. Right. Okay. And it makes them in real time. Now... Both played the dumb guy, old school version, mm-hmm. because, and I did not. I about played it briefly, and I was like, screw this. Yeah. They upgraded this substantially oh. in the AGA version. Okay. Uh, the old versions are painfully slow. Yeah. I mean, it and was one of those... it's a painfully slow game before you get to that It part. was one of those things where I opened up a browser window, and I was reading different things about the game while I was waiting for the computer to finish their turn. Mm-hmm. So... so um, once the computer goes, you, at first, you won't see the computer. He's doing behind-the-scenes stuff. So once you get to the point where you're actually going to uh, go into a, a hot zone, uh, if you, and this was hard to understand at first. I'll, let me tell you. I'll tell you exactly how the first time it went. I went into the building. I, I walked in, and eventually I saw a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Okay? So I was like, I'm going to move towards that guy. I moved, and then he just disappeared. And I didn't know where he went. Mm-hmm. I brought in my next guy, and he was back. And he disappeared again. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, in this game, line of sight is everything. Yeah, it's the fog of war. Well, the thing is, I let's say here, here pretend you're a bad guy. I know. You don't have to pretend. Right? So I'm looking right at you. I right. see you. Here's Boat. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say I pivot this way. Gone. Boat Invisible. gone. <laughs> I have no, no peripheral, peripheral vision yeah. at all. So, and if I want to shoot Boat... <laughs> Where'd he go? Where'd he go? And in the meantime, Bo can have a gun shoved up my hiney. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what's going on? Machete 2 so style. So you learn early on that you will have the most, like, it's almost like they've got blinders like a horse. And they can't, they don't have any yeah. peripheral vision. And that's part of the strategy of the game. Well, I didn't know that at first. So yeah. at first I thought, this game is screwed up. It was my first thought. And then I got to read that turns out a lot of people thought that when it was released. So a lot of sight's important. So <clears throat> the next lesson I learned... I walk in. I understand line of sight. There's a bad guy. I've got the right ammo. I'm going to blast this sucker. No, you got to load your gun. You got to load those guns. So I had to load my. That's and then that takes an action. Yep. Okay. So if you're if, if, if I walk up to boat and I'm like I'm going to blow boat in half, and you walk up to boat and you load your gun and that's your last action, you've got no more action and a right. boat can pummel you. That's right. Okay. Uh, something else I learned. Uh, if you if you, you if you pull the pin on a grenade as your last action, Ooh. you die, yeah. Joe. It blows <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. So action's very important. Mm-hmm. So um, the next item on the docket is uh, occasionally you will get an op- an attack basically of opportunity if your guy is qu- has the right stats to be quick enough to take it. Right. Uh, which it helps. Often though. It doesn't help, but depending on where the bad guys at, yeah. you know, the, in this game, it's all about move. Uh, uh, it's all about placement. You know, one thing we didn't we didn't talk about is that in this game, there's only three characters, and they spell it out for you right at the beginning. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> you, the bad guy, and the hostage. That's right. There's three character sprites. That's right, and so and that's all right. That's all you need. Yeah. I mean, there's also you know trees and you know, yeah. you're in a, a building, right? But I mean, that's it for moving. NPCs. Yeah. And there are no civilians. They're just unless you count the hostages. So, the object of the first mission you're on is your. It's an embassy siege, just like the thing at the beginning says. The guy says, and so you're trying to get these hostages out of the embassy. Now, is this the the screen that's on our, our video right now? Is that the first no, level that, that you that, played? The, no, the okay, first level. I then pl- stop because okay. the OCS version and the AGA version are different in a oh, different okay. way. Okay, because well, this is the first. This is the first screen. Okay, of that's the not OCS the first one version. I played. That that's in fact on my on the version I played. That was. Let me see here. Uh, the second screen, and I realized that that was a difference as I was trying to find this video, and yeah. I was like, and so, but I didn't realize that that was an AGA. Yeah, version. so on the, on, on, on the on the AGA version and the C thirty two version, the first screen is the is the hostage siege in the building. Mm. So you're telling me that the forest thing, yeah. is the which it makes sense why they flip those because in the forest scene, it literally takes you half an hour to even approach the buildings because yeah. it puts you in the middle of the forest. Yeah, at first. yeah. So, what well, in in the embassy scene, but it, this this Roy. Really, takes place on all the scenes. So you go in, you're going to engage the bad guy. You've got line of sight. You've got your weapon loaded with the proper bullets. Okay? So then you hit the button. And depending on what kind of gun you've got, 
to shoot this guy. You target him, and if he's in line of sight, it'll say how many times you want to shoot him. And I believe the most you can shoot him is five times. I could only get up to two. Depends on if you had a semi-automatic weapon. That's right. why. So you could target him five times. Now, one thing I learned on the on the on the embassy part is that the most time you can kill him with two shots, mm. and then the rest of them you just shoot in the wall. Yeah, everybody that I targeted died. Now, here's two. the wackiest part of this game. Line of sight is your friend when you're shooting. Because you can shoot guys that are like a quarter of a mile away. If you're in the line of sight. You know, and this, when you shoot, this uh, secondary screen comes mm -hmm. up. It's sort of like a... Uh, it's like a, a blueprint. It's exactly like a blueprint. And you'll see your bullets just, you know, show your bullet in motion. <laughs> yeah. And you hear a... Arr, arr, <laughs> you know, and it's you shooting that guy from like five... five. Uh, when I get shot, that's the sound I make. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remain standing and motionless. <laughs> that's what it sounds like, yeah, isn't it? It arr. is. You know, so on the for, on the embassy level, the, the bad guys have like headbands too, oh. which is a bad guy staple. Mm, yeah. But we're in an evil headband. <laughs> That's you know? right. So, um, and then, but, but that, it's kind of neat. But the problem is the bad guys can also do that, and so you can be standing there, and just all of a sudden a bad guy like four screens over starts pumping lead in your back. <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh god. Okay. And there's nothing you can do. You no. Can't, yeah. And now again, I, I, I'm sure we mentioned, but this is turn based. Mm -hmm. So. If you're under fire, you can't be like grabbing the joystick and running off. No. You just stand there like an wait. idiot yeah. while you get murdered. That's right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come clean here. This is one of the, with the exception of uh, uh, Syndicate, which really this isn't that much like Syndicate. It's not yeah, other than the perspective. Yeah. This is where the first like real time. It's this not is real time. The, or the turn base. There you go. Excuse me. The first. It's the first time I've sat down and really played the crap out of a turn. Mm -hmm. I mean, and understood generally what was going on. Yeah. And these games are not my bag. That said, I actually, as as slow and plodding and sort of goofy as this game is, I sort of kind of got into it. I played it a lot. I was not good at it. I mean, I'll come clean. Uh, but it was. I like. It's a, this is a lot like Dark Seed in that it's a game that's it's dumb guy simple in a way. And it's a nice entry point for a dumb guy like myself to kind of tip, dip their toe into the turn-based pool, you know. And so I got a kick out of it. I went through and tried. Uh, I found some save games and tried some of the different levels. I could mm -hmm. try them all. I, I did try the one on the boat. Did you try that no. one? I can't believe it because your boat. I know. There's one where you're trying to uh, get these guys off of like a luxury yacht. Pretty, it's pretty good. That is, that is, it yeah. seems like this is a game where close quarters would make things more exciting. So here are the different levels. Uh, you've got the embassy stage, like I said, the embassy siege. Then you've got a hostage situation on a boat, like I mentioned. That's the four on, on the on the AGA C32 version. That's the fourth level. You've got a ground, like you got a hostage situation in the woods, which is the one you played. Mm -hmm. Was that now? Was that was? Is that the search and destroy? Is that? I mean, that's just sort of this like the is, embassy. You just go in there and try yeah. to free the hostages. Right. Yeah. Because I tried that, but I didn't. I, it was like you said, it was so far away. I was mm -hmm. like, man, how, when am I going to get to this place? Then you've got uh, a, a desert mission, and in the middle, and then you've got a. And this one sounds pretty cool too. I didn't get to play this one. The third, the uh, the third level in, on the AGA version is in the Middle East. They've gotten hold of killer missiles, and you've got to go over there and de and destroy four computers to prevent the launch. That's awesome. You know, so it took it took me. Well, I never completed any mission. Because I'm not good. I came very close on the last one, but the, I, but unfortunately, I got I I got killed. Uh, but um, it take it, it looks like about an hour a mission if you have any clues to what you're doing. At least on the mission. I spent I spent over an hour on the first mission and I got destroyed because as soon as you feel like you're making headway, the screen goes black and then you see this picture of all these guys parachuting in. It says the enemy reinforcements have arrived, and then you're dead. Well, you I never I. I I got killed before I ever saw that. Mm. So I, 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 at one point, I took out three bad guys and had gotten. Once you rescue a hostage, you actually they're just become one of your flunkies that you can move around. Except they can do nothing right. except move. That's right. all they do. The funny thing is that you, I don't know if this is a bug or what it is, but like a bunch of times I'd have a, I'd be running a hostage and there'd be a bad guy at the door or something I would just run the hostage right by Human him Human shield and but luckily he was more it seemed like he was more interested in killing me than he mm. was the hostage and he let the hostage go and past him mm. uh, but uh, um, it was sort of fun I mean mm -hmm. in a weird way and this one was one and when you said that we're going to do Saber Team and I figured out what it was I was like 
oh man, this one's going to go down hard. Because again, that turn based. Yeah, it's, it's not but really, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't that bad, if I may. Um, Please. The, this game is just like Settlers. It's clear that this was one of the first games ever trying to do this thing. Yeah. And this is a huge genre right now in the world of PC gaming. Uh, the last XCOM game that came out a couple years ago was huge, and it's exactly what this is. I heard this one oft compared to a game called, I think it was called Laser, uh, was it Laser Blast or something like that. And also, XCOM was also mentioned as one of the things, because, you know, the UFO came out on the Amiga, too. Yeah. The first one. Yeah. And so this is, you know, this this turn-based, even Shadowrun, um, the, the Shadowrun game that's free on Steam or that, Humble yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, the, the, Laser the combat, Squad. Laser Squad. That's Thank right. You, man. The combat is exactly the same. It's that same turn-based, action points-based thing. And so you've got to look beyond it. What I had to do was look beyond the kludgy interface and the confusing controls and say, well, this, is, this was one of the first games that was trying to do this, and it, it is kind of cool. Um, one thing that constantly annoyed me was the, the fact that the, um, the mouse was restricted to the lower third of the it screen. It was very disorienting, yeah. yes. I, had to I, just wanted, I just kept wanting to go up there. Like, it doesn't matter if I can't do anything up there. Just let me travel up there with the mouse. Yeah, you know, don't lock in. me in. I, I didn't like that. Until it's targeting time, you don't get to go up there. Yeah, yeah. Or when you're moving your guy. But yeah, I, and, I um, the manual hurts more than it helps a lot of times like the manual is like look for the most accurate guns to improve your guy's marksmanship but accuracy is not a statistic on the guns so i guess you just have to research the guns in your encyclopedia to figure out what guns were more so there, there were a, there's a lot of missing information um and again just the general pace of the in between turns on that original ocs version is just terrible this is a lot like settlers like you said in the fact that the interface is kind of crap i mean it's it's, I like it because it's simple, but I mean, man, you could, it, you know, if you could go up and just wrap a loop around your guys and then point them somewhere, yeah, which is something you'd see. Or have it have a line come out and say, this is this many action points, you know, as you make right. as you go longer. It would be, yeah. I mean, that'd be, of course, it's an old, it's an old game. Yeah, you're so, not going to yeah, have yeah. that in an old so, game. And, and we're spoiled, yeah. spoiled jerks. That's really. right. Um, I like the fact that they take into a lot of stuff to into account, like like in how much you're carrying. If you get a guy that gets shot a couple of times, you know he might move really slow, and you could even get rid of some stuff. You know? And the thing is, like when you when you've got a guy that's hurt, and you've spread your team out, the amount of turns that it takes your medic to get back to the guy that's hurt, you're not going to survive. The bad guys are going to find you, and they're going to kill you. This reminds me of like playing a pin. Oh, I guess this is where like this reminds me of playing like a pen and paper role yeah. playing game, like a uh, like Me Mech Warrior. Yeah, or, yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. It's what it reminds me of. We used to play this game. I wish I could remember what it was. But we, where you, you know it was the same thing. We'd all get spread out, or even champions to a certain degree, and you have to try to get back to your people when you're beat down. It's mm -hmm. harder. You're yeah. tangling, and so it, you know it was kind of cool. This would have been. This also would have been a fun game to have multiplayer in, mm -hmm. where you could have four different people. And this playing. is this is truly a game that is entirely skill based. Yeah, I mean it's like chess. There's there's no there's not really luck involved. Uh, there's not really it's not it's not a reflex game at all. It, you know your your speed means nothing. Yeah, it, it's also like chess. The fact that it's, it's just brain dead slow. I mean the version you played, I, I don't know how people even played it. Yeah, it was unbelievably slow. It reminds me of playing those old chess games where you, and it, and the computer would take forever to figure out what it was going to do. They were like thinking in human time. You know, it's yeah. like I remember playing like battle chess. Like it was and there was a thing where you could basically force the computer to go. And mm -hmm. I you always hit that. I was like, I'm not going to wait for ten <laughs> minutes. You know, to do that. Um, but I mean, they took a lot into account. Let, now we got to talk about the health screen, the and the chiseled Adonis pictured in that screen. For some reason, <laughs> when you go to the every screen, single one of your guys, it tells you the hit points. It just has one picture. It's got a picture of your guy's face, but mm -hmm. the body is just yeah. chiseled stud. <laughs> now and I noticed this: the stud changed between the old version and the new version. The, the, the stud's different. Really, the new version stud has like a ponytail, and he looks like I don't know, like a. I don't know, like a, a Van Damme like Van Dam, or something. Yeah. The old one looks more like Clutch from GI Joe, <laughs> you know. He's but he's all chiseled. And mm -hmm. Both these, they're all chiseled up, you know. I'm like, man, what a weird choice that was. I guess they didn't want to render eight different guys, yeah. you know. So, yeah. and another thing too is because your guys all look the same. Um, there's no way once you start playing to easily identify who your medic is, for example. And it would have been nice if they would have, you know, changed a sprite or two to just reflect that. Another thing, your little compass will occasionally will turn a color. 
Yeah. Do you know why that is? I, I never figured it. that I, out. I think it's to, when you, you hear a noise or oh, sense a movement or something, it kind of okay. will give you a t- it'll tip, tip them off. Okay. That makes you sense. Know? That's what I read anyway. Now, I, whenever I saw that, I knew something was going on. So my spotty sense was tingling. Um, this game, remember how when you went into a building in, uh, uh, what was it? Like we were just talking about it. In, uh, Syndicate. Syndicate. We've kind of like. Show the interior. Right. Of the this building. does that, but I mean, you really this thing hides its cards until mm-hmm. the last possible second. It really does. You can't see what's going on at all, and so mm-hmm. it makes that make, and also it makes going outdoors and stuff difficult. Mm-hmm. I had trouble deciphering where exactly the entrances and the yeah, exits were. In the isometric viewpoint, sometimes makes it difficult to line yourself up correctly. Yeah, it, uh, and it's not as if when you do that and you do it wrong, you've wasted a whole turn. Yeah. You know? And I wasted a lot of turns in this, just trying to get lined up for shots and stuff. It was, I mean, there's a game here that could be, I mean, if it was modernized, which I guess modern games are just this, but more, you know, modern and awesome. But I mean, it was still, it was still pretty impressive for the time. And one thing I want to mention is the fact that it, here's another game that you can't have music and sound effects at the same time. Did you notice that at the very beginning? You get a you choice. Can choose. You I can always choose. chose sound effects, but uh, that's just me. Uh, the, uh, uh, the the truth of the matter is, I heard the music and it was okay, you know. But the sound effects, I, I was, well, the, and you the get music, some sound effects in that in the music area. But I mean, it just like the music gets the real music. old real fast. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, once you, of course, once you rescue the hostages or take out the computers or whatever you're supposed to be doing, seek and destroy. There's guys a couple that are just straight up go kill stuff. Uh, then you then the mission ends. And but you have, of course, even when you rescue all the hostages, you still have to get all your guys out. So you've got to take, go through the tedium of marching those suckers back to wherever they, they got to go. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. oh god. Uh, but uh, you know, if, if you can get past the uh, ragged old school interface, and you can get past uh, the uh, uh, kind of the quirkiness of the controls and the you know the line of sight and stuff, there's a good game there. Mm-hmm. If you don't play the OCS ECS version, which is just that you no one has that much patience. No one should have that much spare time. Yeah, go yeah. pick up some trash or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I mean, graphically, it's a, it looks pretty good. You know, I thought I, I like the layout. I mean, uh, it's not it's not optimal for efficiency of play, but it looks good. Sure, absolutely. The office I agree. buildings have stuff in them. They're furnished mm-hmm. desks. There are there are toilets in there. Yeah, in there. I they're, think all that stuff looks great. You know, so someone took the time to map all this stuff out, and it's cool. Mm-hmm. You know, and I could see a lot of. I mean, this game. I don't know how successful it was, but I mean, you could absolutely see a, 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 a expansion disc, and I didn't. I guess they never made any. Or a multiplayer version at some point would have been a lot of fun. It, whether you're fighting someone else or teaming with them, mm-hmm. uh, I'm guessing all. I'm guessing most modern versions of games like this have that now. Yeah. So people are probably like, "Well, Aaron, you could go play this," but I don't know. Right. And you know, I've been tempted after after playing this to check out one of the newer games, like XCOM or something like that, just to see how much different it is and how far the genre has right, come. Right. 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 Um. So, you got anything else to say about this one? No. Go okay, on. Okay. I. I Overall, though, burp, I, as surprised as I've ever been, that I didn't. Ha- I mean, I was ready to. I was like, man, I'm going to drop the hammer on this turn-based garbage. You know, for me, that's like diceless role playing. Mm-hmm. You see that? But I mean, it, 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 it's. I get it. I got it. I right. finally got it. Um, so, uh, I should mention this also had a release on the ST and DOS, <laughs> the ever popular DOS. By the way, as as long as we've been talking about this game, yeah. The, the the let's play video is not even halfway through the first mission. Oh yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> it, they go on, they go on. So um, in terms of uh, sc- re- review scores, uh, this was fairly well received. Um, uh, Lemon, prestigious Lemon, uh, the uh, disc version gets an eight point two two, and the CD version an eight. Now we should mention the CD thirty two version. This is all done with the game package. Now you could, uh, from what I heard, you could plug in a mouse and do it. Plug in the mouse. Yeah. Because the thought of playing this with just a controller is does not moving seem that good. cursor at a slow speed. You know, oh my gosh! Any of those games, like a lemming or somewhere you're mm-hmm. controlling with it. Listen, a, a gamepad ain't a joystick. Right. I mean, ain't a, ain't a mouse. A joystick ain't a mouse. This is a computer mouse game. Yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, so I don't know why lemming the CD32 version get a lower score. Oh, I, one thing I should I failed to mention is that the the AGA versions have better. They have pictures that load up after you take your turn that are real nice high res pictures. And apparently they also have tons more audio, mm. like spoken word. Because before every mission, you get sort of a briefing, mm-hmm. and the briefings are good. And they have, and the guy doing them sounds like a 
legitimate guy, like a news guy or a general or <coughs> something like that. So whereas the the uh, OCS version doesn't get all that love. But you know what are you going to do? Two discs too. So I, I, I'm guessing a lot of that's what makes the five discs. The five discs. Because from right. what I heard, there wasn't a ton. I mean, with the exception of the speed, there wasn't a whole lot different. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't stick it around the OCS version to see. So, uh, anyway, Amiga Action gave it a 92. Pretty good. A com Amiga Computing gave it an 84. Amiga Format gave it like an 87. Amiga Power, 68. They weren't they were well, un unimpressed. But and, maybe they're the ones that, yeah, they 50, that 50 is an A, yeah. something like well, that. There always has to be a goo, yeah. you know. Um, CU Amiga gave an 83, the one gave an 81. So, they, you know, 80s and, and a couple. So, I'd say a B, a B game, you know. Uh, sorry, I, get, I think it's the B. I think about that little girl in the B costume. <laughs> Blind melon. Oh, yeah. Um, eBay. So, I looked up what had, what had done, how, what had done. <laughs> I looked at what had done in my brain. What had done? Out. Well, uh, recently, an AGA version of this sold for six and a half bucks. Oh my gosh. Boxed. Uh, <laughs> uh, in the UK, of course. I, I don't think this ever got the old NTSC mm. release. Nothing ever does. Uh, and I, I saw another one that was just OCS go for four and a half bucks. Wow. But but then, get this. Someone had the CD32 big box version of this. So it had a big box release. $150. <laughs> yeah. And now, uh, someone's selling this, just this, the uh, CD32, just the, the you know jewel case version for their one... 91 bucks, and then you can get OCS versions all day for under 20, and in Germany you can get the AGA version for 26. So, Europe, you've got all sorts of choices with the with the money. We got nothing. Yeah. We'll never see a box version. We're screwed. I think the time the sun is set on a, on, on hopes of a Saber Team release. And that's why these format. magazines are so important. Yeah. This is how we can experience this stuff in real time. As it was, we get nothing. Yeah. If you you know before we end the show or you go into your routine. Tell us what Amiga action you found when, on your trip to Europe. Well, um, you know, I, I walked through the streets of Paris, scanning the windows. Amiga, <laughs> I had a lantern. I'd look into each man's eyes to see if I saw Amiga in <laughs> Make sure one lying. <laughs> and, um, but uh, there was nothing. Even I, I looked online. I looked at retro game shops around Paris, and there was one nearby where I was, and they had all their stock on, you know, on the thing. They had all kinds of Amstrad stuff. I guess uh -huh. Amstrad was the big deal over there. They had four Amiga games, uh -huh. four Amiga games. I went. There was a flea market in the in the Piazza. That's not the French That's word, where you of course. Go to work, but yeah. yeah, and I was like, Piazza's man, Piazza's not a French yeah, word. I know it's crazy, me. right? Um, and so. Um, and we were looking, and they had all kinds of great junk. But uh, the only thing gaming-wise I saw was they had um, some Super Nintendo soccer game oh, still geez. in the box. And it looked very out of place in where it was. So and, here's the big question. Did you bring me home a new in-box Acorn Archimedes? Uh, un unfortunately, I did not. However, I did bring you something. From the big F? From the big F. Um, so my brother mocked me for saying that. Is that bad? <laughs> the big F? I don't think there's anything bad about the big F. <laughs> um, the first, the first gift I have for you. Oh, you brought me goodies. I yeah. was joking. Can you pronounce that? Le Strumpf. Le Strumpf. Oh, you know like what gum, that is? They're gummy, gummy Smurfs. Gummy Smurfs. Oh, the boy, I love that. <laughs> Look, everyone, gummy Smurfs. They love Smurfs in the front. Yeah, house. now of course Smurfs are not. They're not technically French. They're Belgian, but they. But they. The word is the same in French as it is. In, Le in Schrumpf. This guy just made this word up at dinner. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, That's yeah. Weird. So, Thank you, boat. And finally, I couldn't go to France without giving you one of these. I don't know what that is. Is this a beret? Oh, boat. How did you know? It was bought on the streets of Paris. Really? Am I going to get chlamydia for putting it on? Look at that. Look at man. Sacre bleu. If you picked up a paintbrush, you'd be right at home in the artist quarter. It fits good, doesn't it? Yeah, I think you look great. Thank you, man. You should wear that to a megathon. If I went to France, would I get hassled? No. Does this mean I'm a tough guy? They would let. They would. They would welcome you with open arms. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. There's no beanie on earth that's going to make that happen. No, no. But how do you wear these things? Yeah, like, oh. a little bit to the side. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You look just like. Yeah. I feel like a Girl Scout. Well, when you wear it like that, you kind of look like one. Thank I think you need to go back to the way it was. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Boat. No problem. No problem. So, um, 
<laughs> I feel like remember Biddy Hill, his character. It's, that's what I, the beret is sort of morphed uh, out of its own. <laughs> there you go. That's that's perfect. Um, so guys, um, we are less than two weeks away from Amigathon 2018. Um, uh, you know, Amigathon is is our annual uh, charity fundraiser. This year, we're benefiting Children's Miracle Networks. We have a uh, Amigathon.com. We have a, a real URL this year. Nice uh, work, buddy. It redirects to our Extra Life page, but that the URL is a lot easier. Amigathon.com versus the Extra Life URL, which was very long. So, if you haven't yet donated, please uh, consider doing so. And uh, regardless if you donate or not, uh, come check us out on July seventh. We're starting at ten thirty uh, UTC, and we will be playing Amiga games. Up to 24 hours. Uh -huh. uh, right now we well, are. We never talked about that, but we are we are <laughs> locked in. Uh, right now we've got enough games to play up through about 14 or 15 hours. But um, if you donate before the start of the event, and we are still under 24 hours, you can request a game for us to play. Uh, and um, right up to the wire. Right, right up to the wire. So um, yeah, Amigathon. Um, I also want to announce the winners of our Patreon song contest from a couple weeks ago. Uh, the, I don't remember what the song was. The name of the song was It's Still Rock and Roll to oh, Me yeah, by that. Billy Joel. You did the little uh, drum solo. Little drum solo, yeah. And uh, so I'd like to uh, congratulate Paul Kitching and Figgy CTZ. There were no winners after that one. <laughs> there were only losers or survivors. Um, and so um, before we kick off this week's song challenge, uh, if you know this song, you can send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com. Or I will death threat. Read your Good name choice. in glory as the winner of the Patreon song <laughs> challenge. Are you going to have any uh, songs during the, during the Amigathon? Oh. I've got, I've got stuff like a, planned. Like a you don't even know about. sort of affair. We all get together and you can forget your guitar. I think John Marshall's bringing his synth collection. Oh, man. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He's going to look like uh, Rick Wakeman. Have you ever, do you remember that album, Journey to the Center of the Earth? <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so, all right. Here we go. Oh, this is the singing right this now. This is the singing. This... This is all the people that are Patreon supporters. We've got a Patreon page, patreon.com slash Amigos Podcast. It gives you access to our Discord uh, channel, which is, we're just talking it's about. It's great. We had a lot of new people. Yeah, you know, we, got, in. we had a lot of new people this past week. Uh, we're, it's a mold favorite. We're talking 24-7 about retro gaming, modern gaming, books, everything. So come on in and join us, uh, patreon.com slash Amigos Podcast. crazy codes we're exchanging. Yeah, this week. yeah, Steam, lots of Steam yeah. codes. Sepp Kiern and Roland Burke, Andrew Monks, Joe the Zombie, John Cook, Dan Ross, Leif Killand, Alan Kerbaum, Donald Tyler, Level Lord, John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRocher, Creepy Dead Boy, Figgy CTZ, The Slow Norris, Stefan Sorgen Mortensen, Edwin <laughs> Helen, Blender 75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbott, Chris Folds, Dreamcatcher, Lauren Giroux, Graham Vebke, Brent Out, Elaine Denson, Adam Battersby, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Hucker, C. Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Alan Kebab, Anthony Jarvis, Tapes from the Crypt, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THT, Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy, Humbert Stad, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixels at Dawn, and Kjolbjorn Barman. Beautiful. That was, be that was beautiful and patriotic. It I was. Like Thank you. Thank you. Um, Let's hope he never hears that. So that guy's litigious. <laughs> that's true. Um, we do uh, record Amigos uh, every Friday, except when we don't. Um, at 5.30, around 5.30 Eastern Time, uh, you can join us in the uh, chat on YouTube live, the live chat, just like uh, Neville Overman, Henrik Anderson, Brutal Barracuda, Pixels at Dawn, Necronom, Pishbot, Level Lord, um, Brutal Barracuda, uh, Edvin Helen, Jonas Rulo. Jonas, thanks again for the magnets. They're awesome. Um, UK Retro Gamer, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us in the chat. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to check out our sister show, ARG Presents, and um, our wacky off topic banter show, Insert Disc 2. Um, all of that stuff coming to you. It's that every magic single banter, week. but. Yeah. So, uh, Aaron? Yeah. 
Next week, we'll be back with a new game. And what is that, Bo? I have no idea. So, you'll find out you know, even when I, I do. remembered this week's game last week after it took me a while, but I got it. I have no clue. I know it was Saber something. Is. And I, I, I rewatched I was like, I got it. I couldn't believe that I got it. I know it. what it is. It's Degeneration. De- oh, degeneration. as timely as today's headline. That's right, Degeneration. Because that just got re-released, or and some kind of version got released Yeah, on HD, yeah, right, right. I've heard bad things. Well, we'll see if the original is worth its weight in... Magnets. Magnets. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Until then, adios. adios.